In the last video, we introduced the concept of the revenue requirement. So in case you've forgotten, the revenue requirement is the amount of money that the regulators authorize the utility company to make in a given year. And this is roughly equivalent to its, its cost of doing business, which is a combination of both its expenses and its uh, rate base times some rate of return. So now that we've figured out how to cal calculate the revenue requirement, let's see how this gets used to figure out what the rate should be on an electric bill. Calculation is actually pretty simple. First, first you take the revenue requirement. I'm just going to abbreviate this now as RR and remember that this is in dollars. And we simply just divide this through by some forecasted amount of sales. So if we're dealing with an electric utility, this uh, forecasted sales is going to be in some unit of like kilowatt hours, which is in a, a unit for electricity. For natural gas, we're dealing with it'd be in something like therms, which is a unit for natural gas. So we just divide this through and revenue requirement divided by forecasted sales equals the rate, which is going to be in dollars per kilowatt hour. So through the rate case process, this rate is uh, set Let's take an example. Let's say that for an electric utility, they have a revenue requirement of $1 million. And let's just say that they expect that in the next year they're going to sell uh, 10 million kilowatt hours of electricity. So. Just do the math, and we find that they have a rate of 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So, during this company's rate case, the commission determines that they have this revenue requirement of $1 million. They forecast out that this they're going to sell 10 million kilowatt hours kilowatt hours of electricity and come up with a rate fixed during the rate case of 10 cents per kilowatt hour. But what happens in the in-between years, in between these rate cases, when they don't get to adjust this number? Well, the utility goes about its business, it sells its power to customers, and it gets its revenue from those sales using this rate of 10 cents per kilowatt hour. But remember how we said that the revenue requirement was divided by a forecasted amount of sales? Well, sometimes that forecast is not exactly right. The actual amount of revenue might actually be higher or lower depending on any number of factors. So let's think for a minute about what the actual revenue might be. Okay, so the actual revenue, as opposed to the estimated revenue requirement, and again, this is in dollars, is going to be equal to the actual sales. kilowatt hours times the rate that was fixed during the rate case. So this is in dollars per kilowatt hour. So you can see right away that one thing that the utility company might try and do to increase its profit is to increase its sales. As the sales go up, 
the revenue goes up in tandem. And likewise, if sales go down, then the revenue will also go down. Now, there's a big downside to all this because if the utility is focused on increasing its sales, it means it won't have really any incentive to help customers reduce their energy use through things like energy efficiency. In general, energy efficiency investments are seen as a good thing because they can help customers save money, they help limit environmental impacts of energy, and uh, they also are the least expensive way to meet our growing energy needs, which means they could bring lower rates in the future. These are some reasons why many regulators, including the Arizona Corporation Commission, have required utilities to meet certain energy efficiency standards. But since these energy efficiency measures make their sales go down, from the utilities company's perspective, that could actually hurt the, the company's bottom line. So we sort of have a dilemma on our hands here. The utilities don't want to decrease their sales, but at the same time, they have to meet these energy efficiency goals. So what do we do? Well, one answer to this problem is a policy called revenue decoupling, and that will be the topic of our next video.